If you want to talk, just talk. Start talking. We can find your picture and look up. If you're just joining us, or if you're still with us from before, Doug Bro is going to be host next week, and we're giving Doug the reins tonight for him to, to see what is involved in doing it. The program will go pretty much as normally goes. Um, I will be away for a, a week, and um, we, we, we don't. Somebody said, why don't you just cancel it? And, well, that's not what we're here for. We have to talk. We're returning. So we'll keep talking. We're returning. And uh, as I give Doug instruction, to the, uh, then you know where we're at. Um, right about one minute away from where we normally start our BS session. We started early tonight so we could get some things done. Um, Doug, you got it. Go. Can you hear me again? I muted myself because my dogs went crazy. Yes. Yes, right. I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, Doug, okay, so what do we got first on the agenda? Well, we do gallery if you choose. I choose gallery. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> gallery. I'll go. All right. All right. So, gotta, look, here's the deal. If you have a gallery piece, put in the in the text thing, type in, I have gallery, and our co-host, Dane, sees it and will let Doug know we have a gallery piece. But when you put the piece up, you say, hey, here's Doug, and he's got a piece, start talking. That way they can find your picture. Yeah, it makes it easier. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, See Matt Harbor beating on the door. Here is a, <laughs> Eddie or, or Doug, if you can make me a spotlight, I'll show off my piece that I've been working on. Oh, that's pretty. I'm looking for you. Keep talking. Oh, now there's three pages. That's the problem. Okay. Fine. Um, I can put, I can do it. Yep. Here I am. Oh, you got me. Okay, there you so are. This, wow. This is a piece That's of apple. Pretty. It started off as a crotch piece. I was aiming to do a natural edge, bowl. Um, turned into a hollow form. It just spoke to being wanting to be a hollow form. Uh, so that's a bark inclusion from the from the crotch piece here. It's um, let's see. So after I turned it, it's got about it was green, it was wet. Um, the walls are right around a quarter inch, five feet thick. And so everywhere where I started checking, sorry, I keep getting room admittances here. I can't see what I'm doing. Mute yourself so you so you don't that doesn't interfere. There we go. And so what I did was I dyed I, I dumped in purple dye on the inside, and then I just let the let the dye from the inside out. And so it looks like it's all full of uh, resin, but that's just where the purple dye came through from the inside. And then as I spun it up, took a squirt bottle with my rip dye and sprayed it onto it as it was rotating between purple and red and yeah. And then, so I've got it finished in Parfix 3408, buffed in Bonix. Um, so it's not complete, I'm working on a lid. I turned three prior to this little doohickey. Uh, not happy with this one, but the other three, the, the concept I wanted, it, it just was hey, not, just kept blowing up on me. Oh, okay, um, great. Um, and then, so on the bottom of this one, so I'll, I'll keep this and use it for something else, but I just spun this around and, and used female paint laying around, um, layering over the uh, texturing pool. Um, but here's the concept. I'm in the process of working with Penny, so I've got the same edge. So you're going to want to take it off because you got to squeeze the bottom. Did they have a question? 
working it down to make it match, and I'm going to put a little piece of antler up on top to cut up my bias and see how that'll work. But yeah, anyhow, go ahead. Uh, is that the piece you had on Facebook? Yes. I thought it was a bowling ball. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, I saw. I saw where you um, thought that. Uh, I could see where it could easily be mistaken for a bowling ball or a big piece of resin, but no. Nope. Uh, piece of apple and just died. Okay, we'll get some. Sure turned out pretty. Thank yep. you. I love that idea of putting color inside. Looks nice. Okay, so let me catch up here on uh, everybody else. So, Paul Hannaby, let's jump to Paul. Hi, Go ahead. Um, I'll just share something on my screen to start with. Um, Hope you can see that. Um, what you can see there on the left, it's an old doorknob. It's off a 1927 Rolls Royce. Um, it's made from bone. And the owner of the car asked me to make some replacement doorknobs for it. So the one on the right is the one that I made, or one of the ones that I made. Um, I made a set of four, one for each door. Um, and they are made out of imitation ivory, which is a resin. And um, there's a picture there of the, the set of four. And, and the old ones. The old ones, are, I mean, obviously it's nearly 100 years old and the the bone has just got so old and brittle, it's just fallen apart, literally. So, um, so um, we wanted to replace them. And uh, he sent me a photo. That's the, the knobs fitted to the car. And that's one close up. And that's the car. Nice. It is pretty. Yeah, a nineteen twenty-seven Rolls Royce that is, and uh, yeah, it's um, it's nice to sort of have made something that will be on that for hopefully many years to come. That's great. Um, but also, I've got another one to show you. Um, just give me two seconds. Find that there is there. Yeah, these here. Can you see those on my on my camera? Um, these are apple wood goblets. I made made a set of these for um, a couple. Um, they moved house and they wanted something to remember the old house by. And this is this is from a, an apple tree that was in the garden. These are two out of a set of twelve. Um, I'll just show you a picture of the whole set there. So that's the, that's the whole set. So um, I've been busy making goblets. Wow, they look good. They match. Yep, hope so. <laughs> I would call them similar, not identical, but yeah, they they they, they sort of match. Yeah, I've never had. Oh, that. What kind of finish is on those? It's uh, it's a it's a lacquer, melamine lacquer, which is pretty durable once it's cured. Um, many coats basically to make it fully water waterproof. I like it. I think it's really beautiful. That's excellent. It's the, it's the biggest set I've ever done. I've done sets of up to six before, but this is the first time I've done as many as 12. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that, sir. Beautiful work. Thank you. Doug, okay. you're, you're up. Who's up? Doug? Doug Don't is. Wake up, Doug. Don't wake him up. There we go. Me, Doug, or Doug Miller, or Doug Moore? Which Doug are we talking to? Miller. <laughs> I got your spot. There was a strange button came up. Anyway, um, got it sorted out now. Anyway, um, went out last week, and uh, in my supply shelves, I found a nice little big leaf maple burl. And uh, you can see it's got the, the burl edges on top. It came out, ended up being a natural edge bowl. I intended to leave a, a dome of the uh, burl on the inside that would be uh, uh, done like the uh, like a hollow form, um, but uh, the it just would not allow it. It, it, it opened up on me and then, um, anyway, it, it came out just fine. And so uh, uh, that's what it is. And it's finished with uh, Mahoney's walnut oil is what it is. Um, little, just under a quarter of an inch thick, top to bottom. Uh, Bottom ended up with my normal uh, spiral and si signature. And then uh, the next day, I still wasn't done. I, I would needed to do some more. So 
uh, went out and picked up a piece of camphor. And that's what we came up with. Ooh, that's sweet. It's, uh, what did I say, seven inches long, something like that. Uh, excuse me, I thought I had this. Uh, yeah, seven inches long. And uh, you can see it, it. it's not the normal just coming up. It comes up and back out, flares back out again. Um, the, the front and back of it were not parallel. And so I ended up with a, a little bit, a little bit of a curve. That's not just a, a uh, optical illusion. It, it, it looks more curved than what it really is, but it's, uh, it does have a little bit of a curve there. Found as I finished up that uh, there's a little tiny knot right here in the bottom that uh, when I was making my circles, I hit it and, it, and that little bitty knot came out. So I've got a little pinhole in the bottom, uh, but it's not enough to worry about. And I left the tenon on it. I just shaped it, cleaned it, cleaned up the edge. And I shaped it so that it tapers in and so, uh, and left it. And so uh, decided I kind of like that little piece. So we're going to keep it for a while. I like right. it. Right. Right down. Like Thank you. Camper it comes in, ends up being one of my favorite woods, partly because of smell, but the colors in it are just, I think they're beautiful. Yeah. I Again, uh, finished with Mahoney's walnut oil. Very nice. All right. All um, right. Thank you. Doug, let me throw this in here. Um, Dave, our IT director and handles our website, said, let you know, Jack Brown, we all remember Jack a couple of weeks ago showed us his ornament with diagonal cuts. He asked to provide information about his jig, and he provided an article about the jig, and it's on our website right now, worldwidewoodturners.org slash router jig for slotting on lathe. So that's on our website. Nice. Okay, Ron Vincent is next. Ron, you're up. Ron, we see you. Now we see all of you. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. What I have is a piece of apple that was an orchard that was being taken out. So it was in a big pile going to be burned and I took a bunch of pieces and this is one of the pieces. Of course it had holes and cracks all over in it so I did some epoxy. So it's red, red What kind of epoxy did you use? Uh, Alumilite. I shouldn't say epoxy, resin. Okay, so we're all still learning on that epoxy thing right now. Did you get me? Uh, I don't have a sound for him right now. We can hear you, Eddie. Okay, I can't hear Ron Vincent. You should be able to now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a Luma light, but on the, uh, there was still some pinholes in it, and I used uh, Super Dilu and put dye in that and mixed it up and then poured it in those little pinholes. That can't, it gave a great color, it really did. Oh, yeah. My younger sister came by while I had it on a lathe, and she said, how'd you do that design in there? <laughs> I, I didn't. Mother Nature did. Good. Good answer. Good answer. We got anybody else up, uh, Dane? I see Mike Morris poking in there. All right. You got it. If you have a gallon you let us know through the chat, and then we'll get there. Um, get a lot of input into the chat tonight. And uh, trying to get unmuted, Eddie. Okay. You got me now? I got you now, Mike. Okay. Uh, I've been down in the shop working with my Rose engine, and uh, it's just a little small uh, pill bottle I made. It's pretty. Very nice. Mm. 
Mike, you're muted again. Okay, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm working on one that's about four inches, but man, that takes some time. So uh, anyway, that's what I'm working on. Oh, by the way, I found a bunch of dolls, and uh, I'm going to be making uh, pins out of them uh, to send to the troops. So I should have those to go next next week. Great. Thank you. And okay. Doug Rose, our first sergeant, he is in charge of our collecting and distributing our freedom pens. And um, th if you haven't gotten in that game yet, you turn a pen, you send it to us, we put it in the hands of a working troop, the people protecting your freedom. And that's important to us to get those items in. Um, do, you, do you want me to send them to you, Eddie, or to Doug? No, you send them right to me. Okay, no problem. We'll take care and get them moved on. I got I got a box in the other day and I gave somebody credit for it and then realized I read off the wrong label when I did that and I have not found the right label. Hey, Eddie, I don't mind if to save you the postage. They can go ahead and send them straight to me. Okay, uh, Doug will, in, in chat, Doug will put in his, his mailing address. Yeah. And that's how it works. If it's in chat, it gets mentioned in chat. Before you leave tonight, Go to chat, bottom right-hand corner, press save chat, and you'll have this. It'll be on your computer. Otherwise, we save it, and Dave puts it on our website. Worldwide web. The background noise again. You're allowed. Get rid of them again. Okay. If you're just coming into us and you've got some noise in the background, let's uh, mute it out. And you can do that from your end. Um, I'm looking at Neil Mack. Yes, that's me. Hi, Hi, Eddie. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks. I started to turn some bottle stoppers. And this one in particular is a bottle. Mac oh, it is. And every bottle needs a stopper. So I made a stopper for the bottle. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do that again. Do that one more. <laughs> okay. Here's the bottle on top of the bottle. Okay. It's a stopper. And now it needs its own stopper. That is nifty. That is Thank nifty. You. Thank you. And I have others. Yeah, we're going to have a, a bottle stopper challenge in a couple of weeks. It'll start. Oh, that, I love the colors. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I had problems turning this. The edges chipped out. I wanted them to be sharper. But then I discovered if I used CA glue before I start to turn the sharp parts, it fortified the wood, and I was able to turn sharp edges. What's the wood, Neil? It's called, um, it's a plywood, actually. Spectra ply. Is that dyed plywood? Did you dye it yourself? No, I did not. I purchased it in a block. It's called spectra ply. It was a fellow, a fellow in Florida selling chunks of it, and I bought a bunch of it at one time, but I haven't found him again. But what, Ruth, what craft sells it? Yeah, Ruth Nows has got some pieces of it for stoppers. Yes, yes, Ruth does. Here's another and, example. And Rebecca DeGroote is making, making those blanks out of skateboards, broken skateboards. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's almost cheating. Rebecca's work is almost cheating. <laughs> <laughs> and then I... I have a new grandson, so I had to turn something for him. So I turned him a, a rattle. Pull it back to you. Yeah. That is nice. Thank you. And I turned him a little bat. And I loaded it with BBs. And a food safe finish on the outside. That's correct. It's uh, beeswax. And then I have one more item to show you. Okay. I turned this 
Miniature birdhouse. That's nice. And this wood is from an evergreen tree that I cut down on my daughter's yard. Uh, I've got to ask you, what did your daughter say about cutting that tree down? <laughs> it is pretty. And Very one nice. more piece, a piece of silver maple turned box from a tree in my daughter's yard. So basically your daughter doesn't have any more trees in her yard, but you have That's some right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to move in the next door to me. I, I like my trees. All right, that is really beautiful work. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Um, if we have another gallery, Dane, do we have another gallery up? I see Bob Moffin in the picture. Bob, you got a gallery tonight? I do. All right. Got a, I got a piece of cherry burl about four or five years ago, and it's been sitting there, and I couldn't figure out what to do with it. So yeah, I turned. Uh, this piece out of it. Pull back, pull back. There you go. It's about 12 inches by 10. <clears throat> and got a bunch of bark on it. That's character, that's beautiful. And I turned uh, this bowl out of it, which is about 11 inches bowl. I made it a little thick because I didn't want to go through the side where it, it indents here. And I didn't want to go to have a big hole in the side. So I had to make it a little bit thick. But uh, I thought it turned out pretty good. Oh, yeah. My wife doesn't like it. She says it's too brown. I thought, well, that's what color trees are. And then I made this smaller one. And then I ran out of wood. Ran out of wood. But, uh, Right. Those, those beautiful pieces. Thank you. Uh, Doug, you, you're hanging in there with us. I need you to see where Martin Clarkson is and bring him in um, as a co-host because he helps us keep an eye on the... Uh, yeah, I thought I gave him co-host already. Uh, I Okay, now I see it. All right, now I've got Matt Hobart. Matt, what is that? This is a, this is a tool handle, and I, I am pimping it, and I used uh, uh, a torch... Uh, propane torch, then scrubbed it off with uh, with the brass bristle brush. There's some knurling here, and then after I did that, I hit it with uh, spirit stain, blue spirit stain, and it doesn't have a finish on it yet because clearly I'm still working on it. But uh, that's it's a tool handle. Pretty. So thank you. And this piece here is a piece I did it, it, it textured, and this is cherry. Um, and the black is is uh, chestnut spirit stain, and the blue is uh, Hampshire sheen embellishing wax, electric blue. And I've got some knurling here that I'm gonna I'm gonna um, uh, metalize with gilt cream, and then I did the, some stuff on the bottom of it with the texturing tool. And go back to that nur to that knurling. Look how is, uniform, look how uniform it is. Th this is the Wagner knurling tool that did this. Um, uh, you know, craft supplies and folks sell it. Uh, one of the one of the problems I have with the knurling tool is it is it is it sort of tears out a little bit on end grain. So what I do is I is I count I literally count to ten. I put it in the wood where I want it, and I count to ten, leaving it in there longer. And it gives me some really good some really good uh, a real good. I don't know if you all can let me drop that down. A little oh, bit. That, it's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, it, and it looks even better in person than it does on the video. So. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Pretty work. All right. Um, pop the spotlight off now. Who's who's logging in spotlights? They can go right. All right. Just logged in, Eddie. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Yeah, how about you? I, I'm. Hey, I'm here, man. I'm here and I'm kicking. And I'm out in my shop, so that's that's the main thing. That's a good thing. Yes, it is. Yep. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, all right, um, Land Brady. Land Brady to everyone is the small bowl a core. Um, which bowl, Lane? Come on in and tell Land. Come on in and ask the 
question again. I asked it when uh, Bob Moffitt was showing his. Okay. Was that a core, Bob? Bob Moffitt. No, it, it wasn't a core. I don't. I don't. I don't do coring. Okay. I don't have the stuff to do it with. All right. I built my own a couple of years ago, and then almost broke my head. So, uh, you know, it's out there, but it can stay there. If Len had loaned me his, I could probably use his, but he doesn't seem to want to loan it to me. <laughs> Let's keep working on them. All right. <laughs> it's about five minutes before the top of the hour, folks. We've got some things active and some things we're working on. I want to cover those for you for a few moments before we get into things. Um, I think I can do this. Um, if it works out, we'll go there. But this is what we have coming up Let's see if it pops up there it is all right and uh, I love the way this thing works now this is one of the new features in zoom is you can um, do a backdrop that you can work with um, they're really catching on and getting to top speed with this but like tonight what's on a table here it is we're gonna have a shop demonstration a little bit with Trey I haven't seen Trey pop up on the list yet um, we're going to do that in a little while. We're going to add in a MIP, a MailChimp questionnaire or poll to see what you think about the MailChimp program for our newsletter. Not, I think it's just a positive change. Um, if we have a little time, I've got a tool talk presentation. We've been looking at gallery by the members already, and it's an invitation to members and to attend us all around the world. You have something to show. There are no other requirements except showing it. Pick it up, but get this, what we're gonna ask. What is it? How big is it? And what you put on it for a finish? Because that's what all wood turners care about. And oh, if it's, if it's got a hole in it, then you sand out the inside. Um, now with that, and, be, and it's perfect timing, um, last week we did something on bowling balls. Well, I'm gonna go over to our host tonight uh, Doug Rowe, and ask him if he's got any bowling ball stories tonight. Yeah, okay, I'm here. But now let me see. I'm all messed up because I'm using my computer tonight, thinking that was going to be better to host with instead of being on my phone. And now I'm not in my workshop. But let me just cruise on out there, and I'll show everybody what went wrong. And I'm oh, almost there. Wrong? We're looking at what went wrong, not what what went right. Uh, this is a, this is a, an educational thing, folks, and that's why we're asking Doug to get involved. Doug, he went neutral, um, but Doug went and got a bowling ball to re, to cut. Doug, you're not back with us yet, bud. Um, you need to regroup. We can come back to you. We're gonna pop the spotlight off Doug here for a minute. And we, we hear something from him, we'll go back to him. But Doug did a, a bowling ball. And after he told me what happened, then I yeah, go to a guy that does bowling balls. Uh, shh, Mark Slay's napping. Don't wake him up. Um, and the guy did bowling balls, and he says if he gets them, he tries not to get them at the discount store. Um, he'll shop a little bit harder than that. Most of the time when people give them away, it's because they've been fractured. So, Doug, you with us again? Nope, he's still working on that. But a fractured bowling ball can be a problem. All right, I was, a moment ago, we started telling you what was going on. We currently have a Christmas ornament challenge going on. Uh, we've advertised it here a couple of times. It's been in our newsletter a couple of times. You have about two months left. No, about a month left, pardon me. Um, this thing is over on election day. A lot of things are over on election day. Uh, but on election day, you could have turned in photographs, don't send me the ornaments, turned in photographs of the ornaments that you've chosen to build or make. The rules are simple. Anything, any kind, anywhere, any material, any shape, any color, any combination of things are allowed. The main rule is you must give it away. You have to give it away. A neighborhood kid, a grandkid, uh, you have to give that away. You don't need the ornament, right? Um, 
and I see Doug's back in the waiting room. Hopefully it clicked back in for him. But that's the Christmas tree ornament that's going right now. I don't think I, ha I have three ornaments that I've gotten photographs on so far. Come on, guys. Turn in some ornaments and send me the pictures. It's bragging rights. We can't do prizes because we can't solicit prizes. And really, I'm not doing with my stuff. Um, but this is a Christmas ornament challenge. Starting next month, we're going to have a wine bottle stopper challenge. See those stoppers that I just showed a few minutes ago? I think it was Neil. We lost you, Eddie. Uh, all right, I think I'm back. Am I back again? You're back now. Okay. Um, but the uh, the bottle stopper challenge is basically the same thing. Get artistic. I mean, there's some weird things you can do for wine bottle stoppers. And the way we perpetuate our the people that's in our lives and we, we share this thing we do is give them away. If you go to dinner at somebody's house for Thanksgiving or Christmas, New Year's, Mardi Gras, or whatever, bring them a wine bottle stopper. There will be wine there. And if you don't live in South Louisiana, there'll be some left. And you have to stop the bottle and put it away. Uh, we don't use those things down here. In fact, there's a couple of ordinances against them. But that's good. And that's one. And I'm, get, I'm getting input now from members about what should we do next? And I love to hear that from you. What should we do next? So, Doug, are you back in the box? Doug Rowe? We've had some problems getting Doug up on here tonight. Uh, hey, guys, right. I'm back in. I don't know if anybody can hear me. I can't hear any of you. I can see Eddie talking, but I don't hear him. You, If you can talk, go. Go ahead. Now it's back on me. Go. You need a host. Yeah, again, hopefully you all hear me. Yeah, we I'll hear just you. start talking. If you don't, then yep. we switch off you. of me. Okay. There's the bowling ball. There's the tenon that I'd started to turn last week. And then I didn't do anything with the bowling ball. I got really busy, and I never took it off the lathe. So it was still stuck between the spindle that was in the, the hole from the bowling ball already and then the live center. And apparently the pressure over about three or four days when I happened to go out there caused this whole bowling ball to crack. So this will <laughs> not be getting turned now. As you can see, that crack goes way in there. Yeah, I don't know if you can but, see uh, that. Hopefully you all see that. I'm not sure what went wrong when I walked out to the workshop. I lost internet connection altogether. I'm back on. I see everybody. I don't hear anyone. Okay. So I think that's an issue on my end, not yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate it. Uh, you need to rehost him, Eddie. Oh, All right. Okay. You're back on Eddie, and Eddie's talking, so I'm going to mute myself. Doug Miller's co host tonight. I gotta find this, but let's rock and roll. All right, um, we're talking about the challenges we have, and we got a lot of questions about what can we do for challenges. And we want a time to demonstrations. Uh, we want to get people to do live demonstrations, tape demonstrations, or whatever that we can add an educational part to this challenge. It's real important that we uh, keep growing, and that's where I want to go. Um, is Trey with us tonight? I haven't oh, heard from him. Have you seen him yet? I saw him come in. Trey Lennox there. Okay, we're looking for Trey. Trey was going to do our... Um, he's working in the shop. No, uh, he's not there. He's back out, I guess. <laughs> Whoa, that hurts. All right, um, I took care of Doug. Is he's in there now? Can you can you hear me? I hear you now, bud. Okay, I, I was trying to get the audio up. Whenever you're ready, I can help. I, I'm I'm good. All right, let's rock and roll with Trey's demonstration tonight, and then we've got another one. I missed. Um, is offered to do a demonstration for us. I'll get that up in a few moments. 
But Trey, if you're ready, let's go. Okay. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight is how do I attach, uh, uh, taking a finial and attaching it to something. So that's what we're going to talk about individually. Um, I'll show you several different ways of doing it. I'm going to cover up things that are, okay. And I'll cover up the stuff on my, the first one is a large sea urchin. And I'm going to turn a little tenant in there to make it fit into the bottom and use it like a 16th or an eighth inch uh, drill, uh, dial between the two. And I'll show you how I do that. Here's an example of one that I've done. I'll show you what I mean by having it fit that way. What? Oh, oh, sorry. Wrong item. That wasn't a sea urchin. This is a sea urchin. Um, when I turn things to make a match to a certain size, I put them in a little Ziploc bag to keep them together. But if you can see the way that little tenant is on there to make it fit, and that fits into the into the bottom of the ornament. And I do the same thing on the top. And I'll show you exactly how I do that quickly. I've got one on the turn for you. And I have a green shell. Perfect. I don't see the one I was going to do, but I'll just grab a different, grab another one. Oh, here it is. I was going to put this this finial on the bottom of this ornament. Now, with this tenon on there that I've done in the past, I can uh, I can recheck it in here, and it stays on center for me to finish the bottom up. Now, I'll take a caliper. And I'm going to measure just a tad over the center of that, of that small hole in the middle, if you can see where I'm doing on there. That's the size that I'm shooting for to get, to get this part in here. That's the size I'm trying to fit in there. Size on it. Remember, this diameter that I'm coming to is the diameter of the of the largest diameter. So. Sandpaper. Now the next thing, I, next dimension I need to check is this inside dimension. And I'll check it. Again, I'll do the same thing with the cow and bring this down to it. Get started. Uh, on these calipers, I've rounded the tips off on them, and I've also flattened them out a little bit further here, uh, so it'll fit inside. It was too wide, and uh, it wouldn't fit inside the small just Still need to come down just a little bit more. But with that tenon on there, I can go back onto it pretty real easy. 
Appreciate it. And there I have the little finial on the bottom of it. And I use E6000 glue to attach them. The next one we'll look at well, the sm is the small sea uh, Let's see if I can get, just get this in here. It's going to be a small sea urchin. And on them, I put about a 45 degree taper on them when I make the pieces up to them. And I do that because the other one's just too small to go otherwise. Um, and again, an example. Here's what I've done without. That's a, it's got a 45 degree taper on it. And that fits in, fits in as measured to that slot size. And the top is done exactly the same way. When I put this one together, I will put a toothpick. I will drill a little small hole in here, and it's somewhere around a 45, number 45 drill bit, I think works in the toothpick, but measure and check it. And I'll take a toothpick and measure that to that, to match it. And I have one to, let's see. Have that on another chuck or? Hey, do you process the, uh, the the hole at all? Do you sand the inside of the hole and the sea urchin itself? Yes, I do. I round the I round the hole off. Could you show us how that's done too? Okay. Um. Thank you. Let's toss on top of that. Uh, sometimes the the uh, extrusions or the little bumps are are too large to be around the, the hole. Um, flatten them out works sometimes. Also, if you could describe how you went and made the holes, how you drill the holes in the shell. Well, the, shells are, the shells already have the holes in them. For the, for the larger sea urchins, I've cut, I've cut a little wedge, uh, wedge shape on, on the lathe. Um, I've used uh, sticky tape and, and coarse sandpaper and enlarge the hole. For, for the smaller diameter holes, I have taken, and I didn't have one hand, handy right there, I've got a grinder, just a, st a stone grinder that fits onto a drill. And I've shaped it, I bought it as a 45, or I've turned around and ground it off and shape, finished reshaping it so it'll, it'll fit the, the small hole in the top. And that gives me a perfectly round hole to fit things back into. Then I also take a little grinder, or you can take a little pocket knife, and trim some of the bumps off around the edge of it. Thank you. I, I've also used a Dremel to trim off the bumps if you need to. Well, I, that, I actually use, that's what I actually used to do that with. But. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll fit this one to a small sea urchin shell. Would you would you hold up that uh, sanding thing that you made again? Sure. Now don't be copying that. It might be proprietary. <laughs> no, it's it's nothing more than a wedge, wedge shaped, and sandpaper's cut. It's just a wedge taper, double sided tape, and stick some ta a coarse sandpaper on it. It's probably one hundred and fifty grit sandpaper. So maybe a hundred, it's a little coarser. Looks like you got um, a tenon on, on it too. Do you put it in a chuck and do it on the lathe? Well, I turned it on the lathe to start with to get the shape. Gotcha, okay. Okay, um, I found out you, it's just as easy to put to, uh, when you're doing it, to just do it by hand instead of trying to do it under power. Um, Brad, the bat those sea urchins don't normally like heat. So, well, you get, you get a little vibration, which is not good either, so. Yeah, they're fragile and brittle, and they break. Yes. Now, this one here, I am going to measure. I need, I need that 45. I'm going to measure just a little bit bigger on that, because that's going to be my big size. 
I'll bring that diameter back down because that's that's the big size up on it. Put a 45 on it. And part it off. And that gives me the I don't know which side I did of this side here. That gives me the little finial, match the finial back to the ornament of the little sea urchin ornament. The idea. Uh, I got to credit Mark Soleil on that one. I wake up Mark and let him know. Totally awake. <laughs> <laughs> the next one I'm going to do is going to be small small globes and in that I have a quarter inch hole through the center of it and the way I turn them this is how I turn them I don't, I, I don't think I need to turn one for you but it's simply I drill a quarter inch hole in, a, in, in the block of wood put it on a pin, uh, pin mandrel and turn the shape. So to make those fit, those pretty much universally fit. Pretty much any of them. I've got a bag of them. And they'll pretty much fit any of any of the ones that I've done. They just go and slip in there. Uh, any shape or size, that, well, that's, that hole's a little tight, but um, it'll fit that one. And it, they just universally fit by, with what I've done with it. The key is, is I have a quarter inch hole and I have a quarter inch shaft that I'm hooking it up to. And I had. You said it was a pen mandrel. Is that a quarter inch shaft on that? Yes, it is. Okay. I think all of them have quarter inch shafts. I'm embarrassed not to know that, but. Yeah. I'm going to pull this off real quick. And... While you're setting it up, I'm going to mention that uh, this evening, folks, hi, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and your moderator. Uh, we have Doug Rowe in training to be a host because I'll be away next week. And Doug's going to pick up the ball and run with it. It's, it's an Army thing. He'll try. Um, but uh, Doug's going to have it next week and take care of things. And tonight, when we go back to the gallery, if you've got something to show, type into the, to the chat room that you have something to show. And Dane is taking care of it. Dane out in Tucson is handling putting the gallery together. Uh, they'll get you linked up between him and um, Martin over in England. Yes, Martin's in England. And uh, between the two of them, they get you linked up, get you on the air, and let you show your piece. And, and now it looks like we're back to looking at this gorgeous finial. Uh, just taking care of one. Okay. Um and okay, I'll get. I mean, this will give, I'll give you a better view of it. Okay, now what I'm going to use is a uh, wrench to measure that diameter. I've ground the edges off, I've tapered it down, make it smaller so it'll fit inside the hole easier. And this finial I left on the uh, left on the chuck to, to make sure I recenter. But. Did 
then I'll, I'll undercut it a little bit because that's going on to a round vessel. And that's the finial and crap on the That's a little tight, but I can work it. It'll work in. Okay, and let's see what else we got next. I got a couple more, but I may not show sure everyone. Okay. Hey, have you used a wrench mod there's a there's a pattern for modifying an open end wrench to have it slice a uh, a tenon. Uh, I don't use it to slice the tenon. I know you could sharpen the top of it and make it work that way, but I do not do that. Okay. Um, the next one, it, that's my small hollow form. The larger hollow the, of a globe, the larger is actually a hollow form, and I use a half inch hole when I go into them. And let's see, I'm back off on this one. I use a half inch hole going into it. So, that means just like that other finial, and I probably don't have to really turn this one for you, but I'll show you how one fits. You pretty much have seen what it looks like. I lose my piece of paper. Yeah, I did. Res, we've just got a question on the um, on the timber that you're using for your finials. I'm assuming it's the black timber that you're using. Um, what wood is it, please? That is ebony. It is ebony. That's okay. Um, I, I'm using I'm using ebony. I found a source of it that I bought from a uh, company that uh, company that does uh, for musical instruments, and they come in. This is this is this is what they come as. Um, so they're they're already they're already round. They're already they're already, already round cylinders. They're um, about six and a half inches by seven eighths of an inch. Already as a round cylinder, and and they were very high quality wood because they were for instruments. Yeah, and this was actually the cheapest. Uh, I could find. I don't. I've broken out from blackwood, so I try not to use blackwood too often. I, I use, I've got a lot of it, and I use some of it, but uh, I don't use it too often. But this one here, I won't. I won't actually turn it. I'll just show. Um, this is a globe. I uh, dyed it, half inch hole, and I back 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 cut it just like I did before with the quarter inch. And I'll, I'll just slips in there and it'll fit on there. I'll make sure they fit. And the top is done the same way. And this, and I just glue this together. Of course, I'll cut that, I'll shorten that up before I glue it, glue it up. But that's the way I do it. Trez, one of the other questions on there is, um, are they hollow? Are the finials turned hollow? I'm assuming they're not if you're turning them on a pen mandrel. Uh, the the smaller the smaller globes are not hollow but, but the diameter is very it's small already so they're not that big um well you see it better on the mandrel because you, you can get a better size on it here here's some different globes of what we're looking at the, on those and they're pretty small, and with a quarter-inch hole, you'd have you'd be fighting it to try to actually hollow them out. The bigger ones are actually are turned. So sorry, Trez. I'm, I'm assuming the, the, then these are these are turned and hollowed. Okay. Now, Trez, what was the question? Go ahead. Just sorry, with the, with the smaller globes, I'm assuming the question's being asked because people would think that they're fairly heavy. So if if I, I, I certainly don't know what wood you've been using there because I only recognize one of them, but I'm assuming if you use a lighter, a lighter timber, 
you're not going to get the weight, especially if the if if the globe is quite small. No, uh, you, most of the timbers that I'm using, or most of the woods I'm using, uh, sorry, you started to get me going. Uh, most of the woods I'm using are fairly light for the uh, yeah. on those. Yeah. So you wouldn't, um, want actually, to be, you wouldn't want to be using something like a black wood, you know, an African uh, black wood, some, something that's really dense. I, I generally wouldn't think I'd want to use a globe out of black wood anyway, because it's just, unless, you, you know, you lose it, there's nothing there. But no, I probably wouldn't. I've got some, uh, I've used some oak though. I made some out of oak and that's, uh, that's pretty hard. Okay, I got a couple more that I wanted to show. Um, and I'll, I'll just, I'll just jump in and relay the information on this wrench. It's definitely a spanner for us UK guys that are over here. And I know there's three or four of us now, but that, that wrench is definitely a spanner. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 well, it's, it's a wrench and I've, uh, I ground the edge, ground the points off of it. So it won't grab on the lathe. And, um, and I thinned it out. I thinned it out to make sure it would go inside of the, you know, where I'm cutting my slots. So make it fit. Previously, it's just too wide. That's great. I'll, I'll do the subtitles in the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, next one I'm going to do is a little finial on the bottom of a birdhouse. And it is very similar to the other. Yes. I do birdhouses, but a little quarter inch, it's, they're little quarter inch uh, finials and these will fit on pretty much, uh, I picked one that was a little big, but this will fit on pretty much any of them. And that's, that one's just tight. And that one maybe loosen another one. Um, and they're just, you know, different shapes and, stuff on them, designs, and um, so that's, a, that's the way I put the finial on for the little birdhouses. We'll show birdhouses later on how I actually make them, but um, I turn a bunch of finials and turn a bunch of birdhouses and then I make them up afterwards. I pick it up and look at it and say which one looks good. What glue do you use? Uh, for those finials, I would use, just use a white glue for, for, the, for the birdhouse, the little birdhouse finials. Um, I use a lot of E6000 glue though, for, for, uh, for items, uh, especially if I have any gap to fill. And the last one's an inside out, and I'm doing it with a quarter inch hole just like I'm doing the other. The only difference is, is that this shoulder depends on how it fits in there. I, I cut, I measure that shoulder diameter just like I would on the little uh, small sea urchin ornament or so, uh, something. I'll measure that to make sure it mates up. Um, and I do that on some of the small globes. I have the same issue on some of them. But here is a inside out ornament and finial. And you can see where I have, I've got that diameter to match the, match the size. I'll run a caliper on it, calibrate this. And again, with the little quarter inch hole using the, the wrench or spanner um, to go into it. Thanks, I like that. Are there any questions or any, anything y'all wanna add to for this week? I think I've covered them all, Trez. Thank you. What do you like about the E6000 glue? Um, what I like about it, um, it doesn't run. And basically, it's just a silicon glue. It doesn't run when you put it on. It stays put, and it will fill gaps, especially on stuff like sea urchin shells and stuff. They'll fill the gap in between the wood and the shell. Um, you also have the ability to remove it if you need to, you can take a knife and cut in there and, and open it up and separate it. Um, I tried epoxies. I, in fact, I messed a whole bunch of ornaments up with epoxies 
I'll put it up there, let it cure, but the epoxy ran all over everything. Afterwards, you know, an hour later, I went out there and looked at it, or the next day I went and looked at it and had epoxy run all over the place. So it moved and I moved away from it. So I've gotten to the E6000 because it stays in place. It's clear. It dries clear. Um, and because it dries clear, it's, you, uh, you know, you don't really see it on there. It's also more flexible than the epoxy. So if you're doing in, in, in sea urchins, there's going to be a movement between the two. Yes. Um, part, you ever try tight bond molding glue? Tight bond, what kind of glue? Molding glue. It's real. Mold, okay. Okay. I haven't tried that. Um, I have E6000. Yeah, E6000 is readily available. I can pick it up from Walmart here. So, okay. um, and I go through and do that. And it comes in really small tubes too, if or large tubes, depending on your need. Yes, it does. I um, think it's the, great. I use it on 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 shop sanding mandrels. It's a great glue. I love that E6000. Yep. And when when I do that, like the ornaments, like the sea urchin ornament, when I'm gluing the top up, the top and bottom, I'll glue the top on, let let it sit there and cure out. Then I'll, I'll I've already drilled the little hole in the top and bottom. I'll turn it upside down. Stick the toothpick or dowel in there, measure it, cut the dot, cut it off, check the fit, and then I'll, I'll try, I'll, you know, put the E6000 on both the toothpicks, on the toothpick and everything, stick it in there, and then I stick it on top of a piece of PVC uh, coupling, and that holds it up in the right direction I need for it to dry out, to uh, finish curing. I use a... I use a whole bunch of uh, P PVC couplings uh, in the w magnitude of four or five dozen at a time when I'm using them. And I'll have the whole table full of them. Hey, Trey? Yes. Can you show us that E6000? E uh, I, I, I will. About this the last couple of weeks. I will show you next week because I'm in my shop and that's, uh, that's in the house. Okay. Um, one other thing, I know we're not it's supposed to be talking about tools and stuff, but this chuck right here is my favorite chuck for, for turning tenants and stuff. Um, I've looked around well, well, and I've looked. Craig. Yes. It's okay if we talk about them. I, what we <laughs> want to avoid is somebody saying, if you don't have this, you can't do that. Oh, no, no, no. That's um, what, what we love people to tell us what they're using, how it works, and why they use it. And I know what you're going to tell me on this one, because I got it. Well, okay. I tried to use this chuck here to do it. And what happened was these, uh, oh, I uh, I'm getting the right, losing the, the jaw set flexed on me. So when that jaw set flexed, it came out of the jaws. If you go to the other chuck, here, here would be my next option, and it, it doesn't flex, but it puts me close up to the chuck when I'm working on it. One way, and the large one-way chuck, the jaw set that they have it for the jaws that go out also flex. They're light duty and they flex, and when the jaw flexes, it loosens up the piece and the piece will come out. This jaw, this jaw set is a heavy, heavy set. It does not flex. Um, I can put something in here at the tip on it. I can grab something, you know, right there at the tip and tighten it down, and it's not going to flex. I didn't get it straight, but it won't flex on me when I tighten it down. And it holds that steady. It's a, it's the a small, it's a, it's a small Vicmar chuck. Gotcha. Okay, it's a small size Vicmar chuck with the uh, with the bit jaws that stick out. Uh, the smaller chucks work better for the finials and stuff, just because you're dealing with smaller stuff and small lay. But uh, but I do after looking at chucks for you know several years, and I bought several different ones and everything else. This is the one I've actually wound up going to. One way does not have a good set of jaw, a jaw set to get you out from the chuck for small stuff. And I've talked to the company for, you know, the last three or four years, every time they show up at Waco, and they still don't have a set out. So, um, Vicmar does have a set, and it, they do have a set for this one, and it works very well. The only thing on Vicmar that I fought for years on it, and this one works, 
is a way to lock it is a set screw. Vicmar used a different uh, method to keep the stuff from backing out and uh, this particular one, um, I was able to drill it and put a set screw in it to lock it in. So and when I could do that, I actually bought this one. So Vicmar is not perfect either, but. Um, do they call those pin jaws, Trey? Right? Um, I don't know what they call them. I think they do. I have several of those chucks and I like them very much. Um, yeah, I've got the Nova version of that. I like it also. Um, the, no, the Nova Chuck on the extended jaws do not, uh, will flex a little bit. They, don't, they still are not tight. And, they still have some flex if you grab something at the very end of it. Um, and I've actually bent some of the one-way jaws, tightening it down. The jaw is actually permanently bent. So. That's a big Mark 100. Uh, I think it's a, it's a small one, which is, I guess, the 100. It's not marked. Yes, but it's yeah, the 100. Yeah, it's a VM 100. Yes. Yeah, and, and on the uh, VM 120, they have uh, the pin jaws, and they only have two jaws, but they're even stronger and hold better than the three jaw in the other. Well, I may have to try that. I've got a couple of those, but I use it downstairs in my big lathe. I don't use it in a small. This, I do most of my turning up here on the small lathe. Nova calls those uh, long nose jaws. Yep. Okay. Trey, look, we really appreciate what you've done for us tonight. It's another great lesson. We'll see you again next week, correct? Yep, that's correct. And for all you guys that have said something about the mess in this in my shop, look over his shoulder right now and don't ever talk to me about it again. <laughs> hey, this, this is me. This is me compared to normal. Yeah. That's not messy. It's organized. That's right. Great That's job, Trey. It is. Look at it this way. There's no shavings draped all over everything. <laughs> no, no not, I try to keep the shavings picked up a little bit. And, and it, his, Chuck says his bins are well organized. Oh, that's just you know, rough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the other thing is, is they're on wheels and I roll them out of the way. Oh, good. I can't do it now because I just connect the computer, but uh, I, I just push it out of the way when I don't need it. So well, sir, I, was, I was joking with you, but I, I, I'm serious. You have the shop I like to have because everything's where I need it at, right there. Yeah. And, well. Uh, great tool I'll holders, flip, too. I'll flip over there. Um, my, I have, my two lathes are set up side by side so I can jump back and forth between the ornamental and the, and the small lathe, well, one way. That's nice. So I'm, I'm right between both of them. So I, I'm doing turning here the, and have the ornamental running because you got to keep adjusting it. So I'll turn here and jump back and forth as it completes its cycle. I've, I've uh, ground the face of my ornamental by accident if I've been watching TV or turning something on. <laughs> Reach over and get an eighth of an inch turn and wonder, where's that silver coming from? <laughs> <laughs> Again, Trey, thank you so much, sir. We'll see you next week as we continue our workshop on how to do ornamental turning. And we're going to add to these workshops. Uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, I've talked a little bit about doing uh, a challenge on bottle stoppers. But I just made a note, and I'm not lying about this. I just made a note to look at other, where's that? It it's in there somewhere, to make more ideas, to ask for more ideas on challenges. And really, we get rocking and rolling. I'd like to see where we can do challenges every month or so. Um, Goblets, boxes, pieces with feet. There you go, stuff like that. That's what we Can I introduce myself? Scrap wood. Am I in, in the group? Yeah, oh yeah, you're in the group, you're here. Hi. Okay, hi. My name's Dallas and I'm a very new wood turner. So I'm a baby amongst you all adults. Okay. So I'm okay. hoping to learn. Here's a word of wisdom. Take all the money you have, put it in an envelope and send it to me. Because it's gonna be I gone before, before soon, right? Right. Okay, well, welcome, sir, and glad you're part of the crew. 
Um, is uh, Steve Ogle uh, available for a demonstration? Who had put that out there earlier tonight? I can't get back to the, the chat that had it in there. Uh, Dave threw in a, a link to the E6000 PNG uh, that you can download and get to. And we've had a couple other comments on um, using uh, materials. Was that Matt Harbor says they use E6000 on sanding mandrels made from engine valves or bolt with a water. Matt, you got one of those so you can show it to us? Yep, I, I do, right here. All right. Who's got Matt? I got to take some. All right. Who's spotlighting? Spotlighting. There we go. There we go. Okay, let me let me switch first of all to the overhead here. Okay, first of all, this is this is a little tube of E6000. This is an engine valve. I don't live in the Detroit area, so there's, everybody's got engine valves. So, and this is a piece of foam I bought and a piece of Velcro from uh, from Home Depot. And I just, I, I cut out sanding, sanding discs, the hook and loop sanding discs and just pop them on there and put them in my drill. And the E6000 is here. Uh, and I do put a little bit of E6000 to hold the Velcro on because the Velcro glue isn't that good. But, uh, and, and then you can, the beauty of the foam is you can then turn it on the lathe. And this one is just made from, uh, from a, a bolt and a washer and the foam was put on it. This is a little bit smaller. This is like two inches in diameter and that's like an inch in diameter. And I just cut sandpaper on it and I put it on a, on a drill extension and I can sand the bottoms of vases and stuff with this. Great. So, and that, that's hook and loop too, so. Always look for, for tools we can build in the shop, sir. Thank you so much. I what kind of foam did you use? Um, it is closed cell foam. I believe I got it. I, I have a big sheet of it. I, uh, I got it from Foam and Things or Foam and More or something like that in Troy, Michigan. Uh, it's something like that. It's Foam and Things. I, I don't know. I remember off the top of my head. I should have looked it up before I could. Then. But uh, yeah, it's it's just a, a you know it's like an inch thick, uh, heavy, dense foam, closed cell foam. Uh, so you don't want something something chintzy that'll that'll fail on you. No, I found that a place that does upholstery professional upholstery work will have different grades of foam available, um, and you have to feel it just how dense it is, uh, and also if you can handle the heat of being spun. So, but thank you, Matt. Matt, appreciate the uh, the tip and hit tonight, and we're back to Steve, I believe. I gotta get uh, Steve up. No, that's no, not not him. I gotta get Steve up here. I lost him. You got me a minute ago. All right, you got just well, I had you, then I lost you. I got him. He, all right, got is. you now. There hey, you go. What do you got tonight? Uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I showed this chatter tool that I made out of a saw blade, and uh, people asked if I could demonstrate it. Well, I finally got set up with a camera so I can kind of do that if if you want. But but all I did with this blade was uh, I, cut, I cut the first few teeth off because I didn't really feel like cutting the rest of them off and I rounded over the tip and then and then I just I sharpened it like a just like a round nose scraper and and that's all I did. But I'll show you how it works. I, I showed this uh, I showed this a couple of weeks ago that I did with it. And uh, it's a really cheap way to do, to get some texturing if you don't have, you know, texturing tools. But um, I'll show you right quick. Let me get the camera turned around. Uh, I've got a piece of maple in here. And can you guys see that all right? Yes, sir, yeah. we do. Okay. Now, the, the biggest thing here is these textures aren't, they're not re repeatable. Uh, everything depends on the speed of the lathe, the distance of the tool rest, the height of the tool rest, and uh, even if your tool rest is parallel with the face of your piece or not. So if you have your tool rest turned where, where it's, it's, uh, it's further out here, 
than it is here, then your pattern is, is gonna change. So, uh, but I, I'll show you right quick, and it is a chatter tool. It's uh, one sound you normally don't wanna hear in your, in, on the lathe, but, uh, but it puts a really nice texture, and I'll show you here. I'll just do a couple. You just wanna just wanna touch touch it up to it. Okay, so I'll do that, and I'll even change the speed a little. And then you can see what you get. Uh, can you all see that? Oh, yes. <clears throat> but a as you experiment with like lathe speed and and your uh, tool rest position and all that, you can get a much finer one. You can get a rougher cut. Uh, you can do like little spirals and things like I did on that top. But it's a really cheap way to get into some texture uh, if you don't have the money to go spend on the on the uh, expensive tools. That's that's great, Steve. That's great. Yeah. So is that working because that blade is flexing or, or how is it yeah. even making that pattern? Yeah, it, it's uh it's it's creating chatter just like if you drug your uh your gouge across here in like a pull cut or a or a shear scrape uh and you get that chatter, if you notice it always leaves like a spiral. This is doing the same thing, but it but it's it's a uh, it's a scraper that that just flexes and it just it just chatters, and that that's all it does, and, uh, and that's why when you when you pull your tool rest further back, uh, you get a completely different pattern. Or if you speed your lathe, you get a completely different pattern. But I've used this thing for years. I mean, literally years. I made that spin top nearly ten years ago with this with this tool here, and uh, it's the only texturing tool I've ever had. Wow. But it won't do it. it won't do no rules. I'm sorry. I said we appreciate this. It's another tool we can build and start. Oh, you're welcome, Captain. You're All right. welcome. Is it recommended to leave the teeth on? I'm sorry. Oh. Making it funny. Is, is oh. it recommended to leave the teeth on? Well, at the time when I made it, I needed a texturing tool right then. And so I just ground the first couple of teeth off. You could just right. take them all off. You can also, you can make this flat across or make it V shape. Uh, there are lots of different shapes for chatter tools. Uh, this was the, the generally the one that I figured I would need the most. So, so I just made it like a round nose scraper. All right. So right. the the end of that is round, Steve. Yes. Uh, is it sharp? Oh yes, it's sharp. You I see. Cut, I cut did myself. You, no, did you did you do it like a like a like, like a round nose scraper? Like. Yes. Is, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you can see. Uh, I don't know if I can get the bevel in the light or not. Oh, but it, it's it beveled again. just like my round nose scrapers. Thank you. Yes, sir. Because you want it to bounce. Uh, the key to this thing is it has to bounce. Yes. Yeah, I it has to chatter. It makes a lot of noise, but and and it vibrates your hands. But it, it really, it, you know, it, it makes some pretty interesting textures. You know. Just, never get too alike. Right. I yeah, broke you a, can't duplicate it. I broke a bandsaw blade this week, and, and I know that uh, you can make them out of bandsaw blades too, and people make handles for them. So, yeah, lots lots of ways you can do it. I just, I honestly, I just never took time to make a handle. Uh, that that's the only reason I don't have one on here. I don't use it enough to really uh, need a handle, I guess. But uh, it's there when I need it. Okay, thanks, Steve. Appreciate the input tonight. Um, Sir. He, he has an open inv invitation to folks. If you've got, uh, I don't want to be offensive, a gizmo, a gadget, or what you might call it, a doohickey or whatever that would make your work or my work a little more interesting uh, and save me some money on buying shop built to or factory built tools, 
we like to see them, bring them in and show them to us. Um, you do a little demo. Look, he was using this cell phone to do that, weren't you, Steve? Yes. Yeah, using the yes. cell phone to do it. Uh, I'd go back to Doug, but Doug was in his underwear laying on the bed. I just, uh, you know. I'm right here. <laughs> Why? Okay, so at least he covered up his underwear. Uh, but I saw the shot a little while ago, Doug. I didn't appreciate that. But uh, we, we have a lot going on tonight. Ten minutes before the hour of eight o'clock. Um, you're tuned into Worldwide Wood Turners. We have our own website. And thanks to some folks that put this together for us, and mainly our IT guy. Uh, we're growing it constantly. Um, we just he just put a couple of projects on it. Uh, we post a lot of photographs. I think I sent him fifty or sixty photographs. Our newsletter ran a couple of extra pages this month because we spotlight photographs. And if you send them to us, that's we use them in a the newsletter. We use them here in a program on a website, on Facebook, every place, because your wood turning is some of the finest in the world. That's it. And if you don't show off the finest in the world, what, you know, what are you doing? So please send us your photographs. You can email me at the club email address, worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. It's real simple. Worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. Remember, our website is worldwidewoodturners.org. Not the other stuff. Um, hey, Eddie, I also, in the chat, I put a link to our Facebook Worldwide Wood Turners page. I think, I'm not super computer savvy, but I think they can copy and paste that right into their browser if they are already a Facebook person. And then it should take them to our Facebook uh, page. Good. I'm, on, I'm on I'm on Windows. I tried to copy paste. It wouldn't work, but I did just click it and it loaded in the browser just fine. Oh, okay. Perfect. Right, because that's how we share information, folks. We put it out there. We we started the year ago with that intention. We're there. So on the Facebook uh Worldwide Wood Turners thing, I actually posted a video of the bowling ball right after it happened, the crack. So there's a much better explanation on there of uh, what happened if y'all want to go see that when you have time okay thank you doug um steve from colorado said if you want to hold that blade put a pair of vice grips on it you know if you if you can't hold it down with vice grips and duct tape you need to get ready get rid of it anyway uh, and from gerald avery in winter haven florida he said mama's butter knife also worked <clears throat> Gerald, you can send Gerald uh, gifts to the state prison um, and we can get his, his cell number because he got caught taking one um, and he ran away. Uh, but it's, you know, if, it, if, it's, if it's made of spring steel or a good quality steel, yeah, real steel from Home Depot ain't gonna work or maybe not. Um, you get, gotta have some spring to it and then it's how much pressure you provide and you don't need a razor sharp edge maybe use a butter knife and just take dish the bottom off a little bit think about a fingernail scraper that's what you're looking for fingernail scraper um who got a i thought i saw pardon me dane popping back in here just now do we have a gallery up dane yes sir jason cullop is chomping at the bit to show us something what you got jason let's see it jason Hey, he just came in. Well, I missed part of the meeting. <laughs> I was here earlier, but I had to do a deal for a cargo trailer. So I <laughs> stepped out for a little bit. So I know you guys had seen this before. Uh, let me flip my camera here. Oh, let's see. There we go. But, you know, I'd, I'd asked you guys about a crack that I had in this guy and it turned out pretty nice I ended up just filling the crack with an epoxy not the prettiest but turned out decent yeah really nice the wife wants me to find a small plastic pot so she can use it as a planter <laughs> okay <laughs> and I had a question for you Eddie on so I was looking at your stuff on the snake hollowing tool. 
And okay. I was actually going to ask you what would be a good size cardboard cutter to put on that. Um, carbide cutter, carbide cardboard. Cardboard. <laughs> cardboard, I'm thinking, wait. Yeah, cardboard, cardboard doesn't work. <laughs> um, I use a one quarter by one quarter piece of cutting steel from either Granger or MSC or McMaster car. And they come in two inch lengths. And you don't want that much length in there. You can cut it in half and get enough cutter out there. Because maybe you're only cutting with a, a quarter inch at the end of that piece. Um, and that's what I use them for. And they can be sharpened on regular carbon wheel or a CBN wheel. You can Because all you're doing is dressing off that point. You don't reshape it every time. And with the diamonds, yeah. you can t take the top off. And that's what you're looking for. OK. Right, they're great. Well, that's what we'll have to look at. That was a, a shop made snake cutter that I did several years ago. And uh, unfortunately, when I had a little setback a couple of years ago, a lot of those things left the shop looking like there was scrap metal. Uh, it wasn't me throwing them out. But, oh, uh, let's see if I can. <laughs> so, mine, I just kind of went off of your design a little bit, but. I used what I had on hand, so it's still a work in progress, but let's see. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that guy. Yeah. Is that solid stock or tube stock? No, it's solid stock, but it's uh, three quarter by one. It was some scrap that I had come by at work. so. As long as the vibration doesn't get you, you can stabilize it and keep the vibration out, it work. Yep, I hope it will. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Appreciate you sharing yep. tonight. No problem. Um, there are many commercial type hollowing tools out there. This was one I saw 20 years ago, and the guy had made one out of inch and a half solid stock. So the first thing I did was go buy a bar of inch and a half solid stock. Then after I picked it up a couple of times, I decided to go to one inch solid stock. Um, but just as long as there's no vibration, it works fine. Um, Chuck Slatterly, Slatterly said he's got, to, oh, wait, wait, now I see Clint Hoyle's up here in the bullpen. Hey, Clint, you're up. Hi, guys, how you doing? All right, Good. what you got, sir? Oh, got busy this weekend. A couple of bowls, there's a red elm. And this Catalfa. And this piece that I got. My brother gave me some wood that he cleared from his land a few months ago. So I made a little bowl, a little flat bowl. In looking about what Stephen said earlier about that spiraling, and this just happened naturally. <laughs> I, I just don't even know how but this wood was hard to cut that's honey locust yep hmm. I, right. can believe, I can believe it uh, really can so well, thank you Clint appreciate the uh, the, the show tonight uh, the demonstration okay. is John Brown up at Sunfield Gallery tonight yeah. yes sir yeah, I'm on here you got me now we there got you are. John, we got you. Okay, Here, here's a little ornament that I made. And these, these ornaments I make out of uh, construction lumber. I just cut, cut it in, uh, oh, you know, one and a half inch pieces, about four or five inches long. And I don't have to hollow them because that uh, pine or whatever it is is so light. And then this one has some decoration on it there and it was done with an elf. John, pull it back. Oh, oh there we go. It's done with one of those elf tools. And it's All about right. two and five eighths inches long. And just colored with those uh, artist markers like Bonnie Klein and all of those used. But uh, anyway, I, ha I have a question about uh, s sending those uh, pen, making the pens for the troops. Uh, what, mo what model of pens do uh, some of the people use that they, I wanted to make some, but I haven't done it for so long. Doug, you in that? You jumping in there? 
Was like I a, think he's asking about what, what pen kits that people are using. Yes, that's correct. So mm -hmm. I'll let some of you pen makers jump in and answer that one. I've, I've always done it with a trim line or a slim line from Penn State Industries. Okay. Uh, number one, they're under two bucks a, 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 a pop. Yeah. Uh, and they've got all the parts. And you can go as crazy as you want on the design as yeah. long as you meet the nib and the cap and you put a collar in. Collar is kind of an option. If you're really artistic, you can eliminate the collar. Okay. Um, but that's the ones I use. And uh, wait, Jason College just put one up on the screen. Let's see something here. Um, and I can see him has one up there now, but he's not spotlighted. No, um, I got him. There it is. There, there, it is. there you go. That's just a slimline pin kit, okay. and I turned it without the center ring. Oh, okay. Pull it back from the camera a little bit. You're too close. Okay. How's that? There we go. No, that's good. So this one, just the end turns rather than in between. Yeah, shows off more wood too. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, mm -hmm. hey, Doug, I appreciate you sending those pins. I actually got them to that unit today. I think uh, Ron Radcliffe's on. He made most of those pins. Ron? Oh, the ones that you sent me? Yeah, because he had sent okay. them to me. And then I pushed them on to you, and I still had a few left over from the last batch that Eddie had sent me. So that's why how I added the extras in there. Okay. Well, I added what I had, and they got uh, given to one of the soldiers to give out to the rest of their company today. So I thought you were giving it to the Air Force. Yes, it's a well. Oh, those Air aren't Force soldiers. Company. No, those are airmen. Oh, okay, airmen. Soldiers are the Army. <laughs> so. I know they're getting ready to head out here in another week, week and a half. Hey, that is, so, that's really awesome. I, I so appreciate you making that connection and being able to get those to them. Yep. And I was talking, well, the airman that I gave him to his, he's married to a friend of mine. They just got married. And she said, there's a couple other squadrons that might be going here in the next few months. So I will keep That's you guys up, yeah, updated on that. It. And like I said, everybody, you, you all can push those pens to me. Eddie's put a lot of time and money and effort into all this, so let's kind of save him some money and just push those pens directly to me, and then I'll get them shipped out to everyone. Yes, uh, and I'm, I'm all for it. Um, Vic Vickers says if they carry it in uniform, the pen pockets are fairly narrow. A, a large Sierra won't fit. Um, and Dave says they got to fit in a uniform pocket. And then we have one from somebody can handle this at the U.S. Space Force. Well, you know, if you told me about the Space Force 50 years ago when I was serving, I'd have you locked up. Um, the troops like the slim lines because they fit in the sleeve pockets better. Okay. okay. If you're worried about the size and the length and the type those dogs barking at. Think about these folks are using these pens in their barracks, in their quarters, when they write a letter home. Um, and whatever you give them is a gift from home and it counts. And I'm a Vietnam vet. You still have a big fork in here, babe, for tomorrow. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, well, hey, Dallas, mute yourself. Yeah. I'm. Huh? Cruising through here, and we're getting some open, open mics. Um, is that address to send it to that man going to be on the on your website? It's on our it's on our chat right now. Okay, it's on the chat, and um, I'll go put my address in the chat again, so it's down there at the bottom or top or however you're seeing it. Give me just a second; I'll type it in there. Yeah, okay, that'll be fine. It'd be a good idea though to add it to the to the website so that when people know, you know. They might lose it from the chat, but they'd be able to find it on the website. Guess what? You just suggested it to the IT manager. There you go. Or the, uh, senior executive senior IT Senior executive IT manager. There you go. We, we, Dave does a great job on our, on our website. And we're adding some other things. I started saying that earlier, and I got sidetracked. Um, we get a lot of things about pay-per-view videos, and really, I, it's, it's a whole new world since this pandemic. We all know it, and we're living with it and through it. Um, but 
because it's changed, clubs have changed, demonstrations changed. Um, AAW didn't happen. Waco didn't happen. I understand Florida's not going to happen. Um, and there's no way to push it through to make it safe for us. I'm 71 years old. I don't want to make contact with another human being unless they're clean and got a mask on. So I know what it's all about. But I don't want to miss anything either. So we at Worldwide Wood Turners, that includes you, um, will assemble the list or the names of these no charge demonstrations by internet. Uh, I was invited to one last week. I went to one for Lighthouse. I saw one from uh, Magnolia, another one from a Texas club. Uh, last night I was invited to, of all places, Great Britain uh, with Martin and his team. You see, all these people are getting together to share. So we're going to collect those names and places and dates and all that stuff, but they have to be not for profit or no charge. They have to be because um, that's just our policy. We get found when we got founded, or we founded this thing a year ago. We agreed that we would not put money in anybody's pocket. That's just the way it's going to be. So if you have it, send it by email to our website www.worldwidewoodturners.org. There's a link on there to add stuff. Uh, Brenda, are you feeling feeling like showing something? Let's let Eddie catch his breath. Who you got? We got Brenda. Hey. Hi. Hey. Um, I've uh, shared before. You know that I have a lot of um, pieces explode on me in the garage. What? And re recently, this one is my latest one that exploded, and I was able to find four pieces of it, glue it back together, and uh, then I put epoxy on it and returned it, and today I had another incident, which was this. This is the, um, the tool rest goes in this piece. Oh boy. Yeah. Your whole banjo broke. Well, actually this is the piece between the banjo and the tool rest. It's like an extension. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, just JB weld that back together. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop tape. Yeah, so there, and I looked on eBay or I mean uh, Amazon or whatever, and Woodcraft and Rockler, and I can't find this piece. Where do I find it at? Check Robust. Too late. Who? Robust. O R O B U S T. Robust. Okay. Because they have all kinds of unique pieces, and they they have different size sockets and chaps for different lathes. They're, they're great. And what type of lathe are you turning on? It's a jet. It's called jet. I yeah, looked so. on jet too. I didn't see nothing on there on the website. Oh, um, column. Column. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Brenda, well, I'm not I'm sure if it's even in. a jet piece, but because I got the, I bought the lathe used and this came with it. So I don't know if it, you know, if, if it don't say anything on it. Is that a one inch post? Brenda. I think so, maybe. Brenda? Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm sitting here looking at that piece. If that was made by Jet, and if you broke that using a uh, bowl gouge or something? Um how did how did you break that? Well, <laughs> I was turning a fairly big piece of um, honey locust, and um, it was too big for my lathe, so I had to turn the motor towards me, you know, towards the front of the uh, lathe, right? Outboard. Right. So which I can only do with the extension. Well, now I can't get to the other side of it without the extension. 
Yep. Thank you. I, I would be more concerned with your safety of how, how in the world you ever broke that if yeah. you didn't get hurt. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, like this plate here, when I uh, when it broke, the biggest piece of it, it was like this from here to here, whizzed past my head. <laughs> and and what all I hope, I hope you're wearing a face shield. I felt it. With all of those pieces coming apart like that, I think I think maybe you need a little help or something before you get hurt. Let's <laughs> let's, let's hope uh, you you're using a good face mask. Yes, I'm wearing the the, the full shield with the uh, the fan in it. Okay. If you're if you're breaking those pieces and you're breaking that extension, you must be getting one hell of a catch. Yeah, I don't know how in the world this thing broke today. That just it just fell. Well, so I'm wondering if that's an aftermarket piece that somebody might have made themselves or whatever. Yeah. You don't see any serial number or any markings from Jed on no. it. No. No. And you well, bought it you. You see this wonder, side of it though. You see, it's not like it's just a flat piece. Turn it sideways. Let's see how thick that is. That's, that's pretty that, weak. That's that's a piece of cast iron. Yep. She she had one hell of a catch, and that was one hell of a sharp blow to that for that to happen. Right, but it's, yeah. And you know what? The the um that's adding up, and you create a stress fracture, and then all of a sudden you have a even if it's a really small catch, but because there's been a series of catches over time that just creates a fissure in that cast, and then that's what makes it go kaboom. Laguna is having a heck of an issue with their tool, uh, tool roast and their banjos breaking um, from what I've seen by a lot of turners recently. Um, but it's, 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 it's partly from repeated catches. I wanted to throw my two nickels in on Dane's comment because um, it is cast and you, you're, you're stressing the cast. I was going to suggest when I said go to Robust, is they may have a welded malleable steel piece that's not cast and it will have some more rigidity to it and it won't be that thing is only a quarter inch thick in, the, in that webbing where, where it broke at yeah and, and the quarter inch thick has got flex even with the ribs on it that's got a certain degree of flex yeah and it was inviting itself to explode right is that is that metal one color where it broke what was that is it all one color where it broke or is it some of it darker it's all one color okay if so it's all one color it broke as one piece there was not a crack before so there's no gray. Crack, that, that looks was, like yeah, cast right. in the grain well it's absolutely cast yeah. i found it um i found it on google I, don't let me over mic's full. i send it to the webmaster brenda i have a question for you yeah when you proceed to turn something, how far is your tool rest away from that piece of wood? Um, at this time, it was pretty close. I kept it pretty close. Um, because what I'm seeing, it almost looks like you're in your living room and you're turning something in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Now with outboard turning, with outboard turning, you're, you're, you, you can get a pretty good bit of adjustment. I had a, a lathe that went outboard pretty good, and I had a, a, the 180 reversing re re set. And I had, at one time, I gave away a Sears that would go 45 degrees and lock into another set of locks to do an offset. And you can well, flip this it you, around. It really got weird. This when your headstock turns 40, uh, 90 degrees and, and your bowl is facing forward now, right? Not yes. on the side. Yeah, that's the one that just goes 90 degrees. I sent the link to the webmaster that I found it. It's out of stock, but at least as a partner, we might be able to search. Let me so ask you another okay. question, Brenda. What, are, what, what, what is your rule of thumb as far as speed and vibration? Um, I had the lathes turned all the way down, and there was a lot of vibration. The um, 
the piece is not completely center yet. I mean, flipped out. What's that? With it being positioned outboard turning, it, 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 the weight's not over the center mass of the bed, so you would have a lot of vibration. Right. Yep. Yeah. No, in fact, I, could, I put a couple of extra pieces of uh, the um, honey locust on the bottom shelf of the <laughs> the lake because yeah. it was just kind of walking around a little bit at first. Go buy some quick creek. Do us all a favor, David. <laughs> on the bed of your legs before you get hurt. Do what? I said, do us all a favor and go back to turning on the bed of your legs rather than <laughs> hanging it out there. Because you 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 said that all your pieces are coming apart. Right. Well, the thing is though with this uh jet, the motor is right behind the yep. Yeah, you, it's in yep. the way. Yep. It's a 12 inch lathe, but you can't make anything bigger than eight inches. Right. That's big enough for you to be using, is eight inches, honestly. <laughs> well, no, I'm truthful. Right. If I can step in here, um, I believe my lathe, which is a shop fox, has exactly that same tool rest and banjo setup. It's a two piece banjo. Am I right, Brenda? That, uh, yeah, piece that you just had break comes right. swings around, and it's uh, not the best made piece of metal. And I don't believe that that comes from Jet. It's uh, okay. Shop Fox, which I was told is a division of Grizzly. And well, uh, I'm okay. looking at replacing my banjo because I'm not happy with it because of that. I wonder if because uh, my lathe came with the same piece and it's just a. Uh, Harbor Freight Special. Oh. <laughs> and I have the same piece. <laughs> okay, that would explain. This is probably Harbor Freight. Yeah. Yeah, the 0462 Grizzly has the same one. Okay. Yeah, they say Grizzly makes the shop fox, so it's the same animal. Or do they, they make, do they make the central the machinery fox. too? <laughs> probably. And the industrial master. Um, here's, here's the deal. When you put a package together like that and you lock it in for a dollar, the dollars have to come out somewhere. And we all, because we've all experienced wasted bearings or broken bearings, and then you call any any company and they want, oh, only eighteen ninety five, but ship twenty dollars. Uh, then you you find out that there are no deals, so you go to your local auto parts bearing place. And you get the identical bearing of better quality. Well, in this case, Brenda, I'd be looking for somebody to make one out of out of welded, put a stiffener underneath it, which is not hard to do. Um, and if you have access to somebody, a, a local firm, if you're talking one inch pen and one inch socket, that's going to be an inventory. And what you need and stress, show them what you had, and tell me once I'm big, big enough buffalo with. Um, and they'll understand it, but once they see it, it's cast. First thing you'll say is, "I can replace that for a whole lot less money and make it a whole lot better." So, but please be careful. It's uh, about quarter after eight. Um, so Got quite I, a for gallery still. Go ahead. All right, so I'm going to jump over to Paul McDaniel. Hello. I'm Hello. Looking, start talking to us, Paul. Yeah, I. Uh, I went on the internet and I purchased some uh, pin uh, seam rippers. There were four dozen of them for just a little over ten dollars, four different colors, and I used a pin blank. They made a seam ripper. I got a couple of spindles, did the same thing. One brown, one black. And I found some red cedar, made a little weed pot, got a 5 8 inch insert so you can put liquid in it. And this was the yellow cedar from a neighbor's tree. It had a hole in it there, but I just poured some epoxy inside and well, that filled it up. Closer to you. Oh, well. Okay. So now we can see it better. 
They, uh, someone said it looks like a spittoon, but uh, I like it myself. I hollered it I out. I bet Steve Ogle might be your subject matter expert on that. I've seen some stuff in his lip before. Steve, is that a spittoon? He's got a mouthful of chart. He can't talk right now. Someone muted my microphone. He's muted. Okay. Yeah, that, that looks like a spit tune to me. Yeah. I've got a brass one sitting right here in the shop. Well, this this one was a yellow cedar from a neighbor's tree. Uh, I didn't uh, line it with uh, epoxy or anything, so uh, we're not going to be doing any spitting in it. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. all right, Chuck, what you got for us, buddy? Chuck, you're up. You hear me? Yep. Okay. Hey, I'm not sure how this share screen works. Is it, is it share? Don't, 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 desktop? Please don't use it. Oh, don't use it? No. Ten for uh, it. All right. It, so, it's very right. hard to control from this end. We can't get rid of you. Uh, we can't Can get you off the screen. Is it off now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. So I, I just got, it's funny that Clint had that one uh, plate because I made something quick like that this week. I had this uh, small piece of cherry that was, um, it was a small branch, probably maybe like that. And I cut the pith out so it wouldn't continue to crack. And so I ended up with a really small piece and tried to make a, like a odd bowl upside down. It almost looks like an ashtray, but this is technically the bottom. And uh, so I have like a, a um, like a little tradition, like if people come visit me at my house, I'll make them a bowl or something. My sister and my mom were down, so I made that. I did make a snowman and give it away this week. That's why I was trying to screen share. But um, I only took a picture of it and gave it to a kid. Um, well, when you, if you're a member and you click screen share, you set up, we go to looking at your whole computer. The desktop, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's where I, I saved the pictures on the desktop because I didn't know how to um, – just put them on here like that. We're working yeah. on it. We're working on a fix for that right now. Uh, where, right, you no drop a, where you can drop a photo and then we go get it. I have I have two questions. Um, you want me to wait till after the gallery for the questions? No, go. Um, so I think it was uh, um, I was watching a turning thing on YouTube and I believe it was Stuart Batty, and I was wondering if anybody knew if knew about this. He was the only person I've ever heard say this. We say if you're turning between like 900 and under, your piece will fall to the ground if it fall, flies out, and like 1200 and above, it'll fly in the air. Is does anybody have any experience with that? Like I haven't had anything fly out yet. Luckily, knock on wood. But I was just curious about that. No, but it, yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, I, I, I have no opinion on that. Okay, all right. Fair enough. I've, 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 I've heard him say 800 and below goes to the ground and above that goes in the air. Uh, okay. I don't ever turn that slow, so I don't know. Right? Yeah, I turn faster than that. The only time I usually am below like almost wide open is if something's really out of bounds and it's giving me a lot of wobble and I can't get out of it by going higher, I'll get it down and uh, it usually works itself out and then I, I crank it up. Chuck, um, I have this theory on it. Uh, Chuck, if you if you have to ask somebody what number to turn at, don't follow that direction because they're not on your lathe with your piece of wood using your tools and your expertise. Because the, the bottom line is be safe. If you're unhappy with it going fast, take it down slow and do better cuts. Uh, I have a philosophy. Once I get it spinning good, I'm going to crank it Z up. That's what my mentor taught me. I, I'll get better cuts and better work. But that's me. If that won't work for you, it won't work for you. So dump all those number things and go back to just being safe, please. Yeah. Uh, the, one other question I had was, uh, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know the guy's name. The gentleman that lives, the guy that showed this small uh, ornament, I believe he's in the retirement home, right? Uh, yeah, John. He, was saying, he said he uses, but I try to turn like a regular for him. Terrible tear out with it, no matter what tool I put it in. Is that he's just using regular like white pine two by fours? Yep. Yeah, I'm on here. I'm on here now. Yeah, it's just regular construction lumber, but you've got to have extremely sharp tools 
And the, what I turned out with was a 3 8 spindle gouge. Okay, I'll try some different stuff. I had a carbide tool when I tried that, and I was really surprised that I got tear out. Maybe I'll just I'll fool around with it a little more. Do I have tons um, of? I have stuff. carbide tools also, and I don't recommend them for that. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yep. Cool. The only Pretty thing good. I like to use the carbide tools for is turning a, well, I'll call it a plastic uh, pen. Box them through. I don't. I don't use. I don't use them on wood. They're nothing but a. In my opinion. They're, they're just a scraper. Yes. And, but they do work very good on that plastic or whatever you, you call yeah, that. Acrylic, the woodcraft uh, acrylic. Composition for uh, pen blanks. Okay. The acrylic, yeah. Yeah, they acrylic. Are, they yeah. are exactly a scraper. And um, Chuck, you might find that in, instead of going flat into a cut uh, with that light material, because my, my buddy Ronnie loves two by fours. Um, it, but he turns out great work with it because he's learned how to cut better. You see, if you go straight in with a gouge, cut it, whatever, you, you're plowing the wood out your way. But when you kick it up a little bit, and Mark's there saying he wants to teach this, uh, you kick it up a little bit and go in, you do a slice. And he goes, look, I call little curly cues come off. That's what you're looking for. Mark, you still out there? You awake? I, I'm still out there, and I would recommend to him that if he goes to YouTube and look up Mark Soleil on wood slicing, then he'll find that he can turn those two by fours and not have to ever use sandpaper. Yep, that's that's it because he's going to what? What's he going to do, Mark? Well, he's going to be slicing. He's going to do his beads, goes, flats, discs, and points, always slicing. Slicing, that's the key. Yeah. A lot of new turners don't really understand it because we have a lot of YouTube buddies that show stuff flying over your shoulder and going into a bucket and all that. There's no art in that. So if you can slice, you can slice. And I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here about this. Uh, I've probably watched those videos about 15 times each at least. Yeah. I'll definitely check. And I've finally started getting it. I yeah. use a... I know the proper grinder, what everybody claims to be the best grind is a 40 degrees, but what nope. I'm using to turn those was as a 35 degree for to get down in the very sharp coves on there. And uh, yeah, the cutting edge might not last as long, but it really does a good job of cutting it. And, and if I sand it, the only thing I sand with is 320. And you're using a gouge? Yes, I use a gouge, a 3 8 spindle gouge. 3 8 okay. spindle gouge. Yeah, three eight spindle gouge. Yeah, I use I use a convex grind on the back of mine. I do not use a concave grind, so that I have the ability. If you you can go to my videos, and you'll see that I can use the entire parabolic curve on the top of the blade, and the only metal that ever touches the wood is the first one hundred and twenty eighth of an inch. And after that, everything is breakaway, so you have absolutely no tool resistance, right, when you are slicing wood. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And when folks start throwing around that angle of cut, what one are you comfortable with? That's where you have to go. Which one are you comfortable with? Um, I. I I have no idea what angle some of my tools are, are sharpened to um, and because it's not important. They still cut right. I'm looking at Patrick. Patrick, you got a gallery item? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Something real quick. One of your 12 cent pins <laughs> with a little extra something added to it. Would you add? bring it back to you a little bit? I turned the cap oh, to go I on it. Your work, I got some. That's out of red cedar. Can you hold it up? Right, right there. Now, which I'll miss is he has to core that cap to match, to match the end of that pen. And if you want to build some talent, do that. Oh, you match both ends. What a dog. Yeah. Nice. Good skew practice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate yes, it. Patrick has given us some pens for Freedom Pen Project um, in the past. Um, and we, we look, we welcome those types of pens. 
and that's the 12 sim pen something I did 12 years ago because it's just a skill builder and I've got a video or two on it and I don't make any money at it. I just, I just want to donate the pens. Um, who I got here, uh, from, there he is. Hello there, Andy. What you got, sir? Uh, I've got a couple of pieces. They're still in the chuck because I would like about five more coats of this Texas ebony. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. What are you coating it with? Like a load. I'm using lacquer. I sanded it to 600 and then started putting the lacquer on there. And uh, I didn't save them because they're going to be gone this weekend. So I wanted to show them now at this time. And uh, that's the base style. Then I got this one here. Oh. But there's a, uh, and that Texas 70, you know, the, the pit, the black, it's not very big inside of the branches. It's probably two thirds black and a third of it is uh, the sapwood, but it, it, it does make a beautiful grain there. But, it really uh, does. Pretty How'd deep. you get that heart shape on there? Uh, that's the, uh, where a branch was coming out. And so as I, as I curved, you know, it's just the curve. You put a curve in there, that's the grain going down, cutting it away. Is that what you're talking about that? Nope. No, the heart. Oh, the heart. The knot. The knot looks like a heart. Oh, well, it just was in the wood. Yeah. It's a pretty piece, though. Very yeah. nice. That's no, thank you. What was the second wood, sir? The both of them were Texas ebony. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, very precious around here. We've had a freeze about 15 years ago. And when a tree comes down, the, the pits usually rotted out of it. And I let a bunch of it go one time and I got to thinking, why did you do that? You could have made pin blanks, uh, bottle stopper, just cut it up and did all kinds of things with it. So I don't let any of it slide by anymore. Well, well I appreciate you showing it to us this evening, sir. <laughs> really nice work. Uh, you got somebody else up? We're, at, we're in a lull right now. All right, great. Great. All right. Not not great that we had a law, but it's right about 830. Um, and uh, we normally go for two hours plus. But uh, letting folks know we're still here and we're still cranking and we still want your input. Um, we were up to 100 members tonight a couple of times. In fact, uh, Steve is just now checking in. He's joining us tonight kind of late. Um, but we're here and somebody asked me about increasing it. Um, financially at this time, I cannot afford to increase it. Um, just the truth. I'm here to tell you the truth. Um, if we keep bumping on that hundred and it looks like we need to, we'll figure our way to do, to, to do so. But otherwise we're just going to be clicking on along and sharing wood, wood turning with everybody. And I'm if you are leaving tonight, press the chat thing and save the chat. Save it. Cause I mean, we've got, Mark Slade's wood slicing ideas, uh, YouTube's from Steven on using uh, that the tool he had. Um, all these things are in the chat because you're sharing the information we want or you want. So please save the chat and we'll, we'll do that. Um, you have any up now, right now for gallery, Dane? Because no, we got we've got nobody on board at the moment. All right, because we have this one jumping. Hey, Eddie, if you'd uh, like, since we're in a lull, I can tell everyone about my embarrassing moment with the bandsaw blade to keep them from having one themselves. Uh, yeah, I, I like, you know, you know, I was leaving that alone, Doug. But okay, um, if, if you'd like to chat about that, um, I, I, I'd love to know about it. <laughs> okay, know about so again, it. I'm not out in the workshop. So I can't show you the bandsaw blade, but you've all seen a bandsaw blade that's round. It only goes on the bandsaw one way. <laughs> I put the, changed out the bandsaw blade like I have many a times before. And I'm looking at those teeth going, them teeth are upside down. Well, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. So I went ahead to cut a piece and I got nothing but smoke. I mean, it did cut just a little bit, not enough. Something's wrong. So I go to my expert on all matters, my wife. Hey, look at this bandsaw blade. Is there 
It looks like it's wrong. It's upside down. She agreed. That's upside down. I could not figure out how to fix it. So I went to YouTube. Stumpy Nubs had a video on there for dumb people like me that showed your bandsaw blade is just inside out. Flip it inside out. Put it back on. Oh, look, the teeth are in the right direction. So to save you the embarrassment, if it ever happens to you, your bandsaw blade is just inside out. <laughs> I have to laugh, Doug, because when I worked in a cabinet shop, we would do that. People occasionally is flip those blades around. So, and then just wait for the smoke. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, when you're changing bandsaw blades, uh, some folks don't realize that when you are manually rolling that blade uh, with the cabinet open and keep taking out and everything else, and you just spit it up your blade. And if you did it right, um, you're running totally uh, uniform. You're not pushing in, you're not pushing out. You're not bearing against the bearing or the bushings or the sets or whatever, and you're running true. No wood in it. You're just running true. You can do that by hand. Just spin it around by hand and get it and watch the blade. If the blade seems to creep back, you got to adjust a little bit. Creep forward, you got to adjust a little bit. Get it back to where it's running through. And then, then bring up the rest, the rest, the guide, the guide, the guide, the guide. Don't rush it. And every blade is welded, and almost every blade is slightly, slightly different. Slightly. So when you do change a, bl a blade for safety's sake, let's do it by hand. Let's roll it around and see how it runs and see if it walks in and out. If any of that, it number one, affects your cut, affects the quality of the blade, and really can get you hurt. So that's an idea. Wait, we, somebody said something about tool rest. And Ronnie Monette jumped in here a little while ago about tool rest and, and, and distances from tool rest. I am in search of somebody to do an educational video for us. It can be 10 minutes long um, on placement of a tool rest. Because I can go get the Jet book, the Black & Decker book. I got one from Milwaukee um, that'll tell you the tool rest is dead center and a sixteenth away from the, the work. And that's what they show you. And I see old Mark on this, like this in the background, um, because there is no rule that you can apply that to for tool rest. And I want somebody to show us that. And you see and turners know what I'm talking about. You're not going to find that tool rest position in a book. It's right here. So we're looking for that demo. If you'll do it for us. Let us know. Eddie, can I say something? Sure. Okay, I've got two things to say according to for safety. Right, number one is thank you very much, right, for what you just said about the bandsaw blade. You know, putting on and testing it by hand first and getting it adjusted right. Because you don't just put one on and then flip the damn switch. Because, as you said, they're all welded a little bit different. They're never the same, right? And it, that changes the position on, on the wheel. The second thing I want to say is for all beginning turners, right, the reason that the manufacturers make the tool rests out of cast iron is for your own personal safety, right? So that if you get a bad catch, you're using bad technique that slams down, that tool rest will break and your tool will go down. If it is made out of welded solid steel, right, with a, with a high speed steel bar across the top like the Robust, those are really only for more advanced turners because that will not give. What we'll give will be your wrist or your arm bones or whatever. So having a cast iron tool rest for a beginner is almost totally essential for their own safety until they learn to take tiny bites, have a sharp tool, and learn good tool technique. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. And we've had some input um, from several folks and it's on the chat. I keep saying that's on the chat. 
um, about that tool, about that extension, where it's available, um, it's out of stock and it had a price and some other stuff. So that item is out, that item is out there. Um, I heard from somebody who said, actually, you only chat with host and co-host, nobody else shows up on a list. Hey, if you wanna chat with a member, when you go to chat, you can pick the, the thing on the bottom, it says two, and you pick anybody listed there. And you can send them a chat, you can make it a personal chat. Uh, if you pick everybody, everybody sees it. Um, no, which, they don't. No, they don't. Only co-hosts show up. Never has been like that before. I don't, we haven't made any adjustments. What type of machine do you like to watch them on? As a co-host, you see everybody. The rest of us can only see co-hosts. I see everybody. I see everybody. I see everybody. I just see co-hosts. Everybody. Gallery. I'm only seeing seven. I see everybody. Go to gallery view. Unfortunately, I see everybody. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, do, I, I just I. When the arrows on each side will take you to a different screen if you only have one monitor. I just see co-hosts. Do you have gallery? I just see co-hosts. Yeah, I'm switching between speaker and gallery, and it doesn't change what I see. Yeah, you First on the list is everyone. You need to get the latest version of Zoom. All right, maybe that's it. Okay, thank you. And that's a smart move. But once they, they're growing, they're growing rapidly. And uh, there's a lot of competition in this kind of world out there right now. So they have to. But if you, and it doesn't cost you anything. You go to Zoom US, you come down to update, you hit the update, don't do it right now. And it will update your computer, it takes about a minute, minute and a half. Doug did it tonight while we were talking on the phone. Um, and it'll help you out. And some of the new things we're going to introduce, some of those things you have to have an updated version of Zoom in order to get into them. But we're gonna stay general, but if we're gonna add some special targets or whatever, we can do that. Um, Anybody, I, I, I see somebody keeps popping up on me and I can't um, figure out where they came from or where they're going. Um, but anybody else got a gallery item tonight? We've got a few minutes, pop in and say it. See, there's Bob again. Um, no, we don't, I, there's no uh, new gallery pieces yet. Okay. So yeah, I just went through it again. Some Bob, you're popping in there. Are you wanting to show something? Bob? Bob Moffat? Yeah, he keeps popping in. That's what I was looking for. Uh, but he he's not in front of the camera right now. Okay, I'm in front of the camera. All right. Did you have okay, well, something I did today? I did a, uh, a closed form bowl. And I had some scratches in the inside after I'd taken it off my lathe and I didn't realize it. So I took, well, it doesn't show my picture on here. Back up Back a little up. bit more. Huh? Back up the camera a little bit. Can you see that? Yeah, raise it up higher. There you go. Okay, I can't see the picture of it. But anyway, I took a uh, towel and chuck with some step jaws and just took a, a drill bit extension and put my sanding pad in it. And it was a whole lot easier to move the bowl around than it was to use my drill because my drill's sort of rickety. And uh, you could do this with a step jaws or you could do it with the long jaws or you could even do it with the number two jaws and just drill a hole in a piece of wood and cut a groove in it and you know put it in your jaws and tighten it down. But uh, it made oh, so it a whole lot easier to, to sand the inside the bottom of it because I couldn't really get into it very well with the drill. Well, also, 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 that, also with Jacob's six. chuck. And this is and just an old uh, drill bit extension that I got at a big box store with a quarter inch. Uh, you know, it'll hold a quarter inch and it'll hold a regular sanding pad. Yep. When you're using that, Bob, you better put two hands on a piece that you're sanding with and yeah, the lathe holds the other piece. Just, you can hold the, this is on your lathe and you hold, hold your piece with both hands and move it around and it's, to me it was a whole lot easier to do sure was good idea we always looking for those you can tell this isn't the best presenting? of sanding pads by are you presenting at seven o'clock and five o'clock 
Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then part of it, I just raised the bowl up and down where I had a line in the center. See where that sanding pad is tearing? That's where you put the E6000 glue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is an old sanding pad that I had, so. I got one of these. I got a long, long drill bit extension. I have to I go to the that. car shop and get me some, some uh, motor valves tomorrow. So I make me some fancy ones. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And above all, when you're doing this, above all else, don't turn the speed up thinking it's going to sand better. No, it's not. <laughs> no, no. The smoke, the smoke is indication. Um, and that E6, E6, 6,000, that's a good idea, a good suggestion. Um, in my early, early days, I saw an air powered angle sander at Harbor Freight. And I yes. thought, this is cool. Use this to go over it. Well, I put it on my compressor and brought it up like 80 and 90 pounds. And I squeezed it. Who can tell me what happened? This tore went flying off, off. Tore off your mandrel. The whole pad went. <laughs> the, the way you use that, Eddie, that, that is you don't put it on your compressor because the, the head on that will just rotate freely. You use it like one of those inertial sanders. It's well, a really what, cheap, cheap way to buy, it, buy an inertial sander. You just buy that, that cheap uh, uh, angled uh, drill thing from Harbor Freight but you don't put it on the compressor. You just let it spin. You know, let the lathe spin it. Where were you, know, you five years, years ago when I tried that? <laughs> but I, learned that I learned that from somebody like you that, that all that long ago, 10 years ago or 12 years ago. Or whatever I, I, I still have that when I developed the, um, the bearing sand, a power, powerless sanding. Um, and, and I see turn as power sand and not power sand. And my, uh, when I do my work, I'd rather not power sand. It's called yep. wood turning, not wood sanding. Uh, pardon me. Um, hey, Eddie. Sir. You want to jump to Mark? He's got something to show us. Wake him up. I got him. Hey, uh, I'll, uh, let me flip this around. I just thought I'd show you. There's a real nice big mimosa bowl. Uh, the grain on the mimosa is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, this was turned in uh, uh, September of 16, and I brought it over from the warehouse to return it and finish it. But uh, the grain in mimosa is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I don't use any of the mimosa pieces for food grade stuff because mimosa is toxic to, uh, you know, animals and everything. So... Uh, but it's a gorgeous grain wood. And if you can get some real big stuff, this is about, I don't know, 16, 17 inches. It's really pretty. Beautiful piece. Yes, it but, is. Uh, yeah, just don't. And you can see the shop stays a mess here, you know. It just, now these are four big, uh, these are four big ingrain uh, um, ambrosia maple pieces I'm going to turn, make about 19 inch pieces. But, but yeah, that's, that's, I just thought I'd show that because if people have, uh, it's a great, great wood to turn. It's just gorgeous. It's got four grain loops in it. I know, right? North, well, south, and west. yeah, you see the pith is toward the top. So yep. you get the X factor. See, you get the yep. X, X factor grain. Now, if I had turned it this way, then I wouldn't have the X factor in there. I'd have all... I'd have the O factor. All the, the grain lines would be in concentric circles. So when you put your blank on, you got to make sure which which way you you've got the top and which way you've got the bottom. Nice job, nice job, Mark, on centering that up as well. That was well done. Right. It's beautiful wood, you know, absolutely beautiful wood. All right, that's. I just thought I'd show that gifts because if you run across mimosa right from these tree companies grab it it is and it makes beautiful hollow forms and everything else thank you mark and remember right. folks, if you get a piece from a tree company bring them back a piece points <laughs> with the tree company you need to pay them back bring you turn turn a little bowl turn a little whatever and go back to it and say oh look that's what i got out of wood you gave me you'll get more wood
Um, I, 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 I give them, I give them pens. Uh, they, 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 they love it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's all I have. Eddie, I got something to add on the sanding extension. Sure. What you got? I got the, well, this sanding extension, right? And then to put it in there, holding on to it, this is a, a quarter inch piece of pipe. So I'll put the piece of pipe over it so I can go in and out holding the piece of pipe inside a bowl. There you go. Hey, Joaquin, I got one of those too. Do you? <laughs> you got a piece of pipe on it? No, I just use my glove. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot easier on your hand. True, true, true. I'll have to, I'll have to take out of that pipe. Okay. It's, it's great to see on the bottoms of vases and stuff with though. Yeah. And, and hey, every every week we share a little something somebody can build, and that's important. Important. Really. I love it. I love going out and playing with that stuff. And <clears throat> won't be long, and I'm doing that. Michael Stratton was up a minute ago. Mike, did you have something you wanted to show? Um, yeah, I've got a small threaded um, English boxwood. Um, Hand thread chased, yeah. And you thread cha you hand chased, yeah. Very cool, Mick. That is. That's, but, uh, yeah, I make. Uh, well, watching um, Captain Eddie and uh, um, Sam Angelo, that's got me into the uh, thread chasing. Sam is Wyoming wood turner. That's yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, who now lives in Montana. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> now lives in, yeah, but I say. <laughs> uh, did you hide it? A little ring box. Did yeah. you hide the, the joint in the burn? Is the burn hiding the joint? Yes, that, well, the joint is between the, the two burns. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's done well because I can't pick it out. Yeah. Oh, now I see it. There we are. Nice work. Really nice. Pull them back to you a little bit. There on, you go. On the top with the elf tool, I just put a bit of um, decoration on the top. Okay. Works good. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate sharing. Now, Michael, you in, you in a GB? Oh, you... I, I am, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ma you. Martin um, Clarkson, I, I joined his group. Okay. He's, that was on tonight. And then he said, come, well, it's uh, 10 to 3 in the morning now in the UK. <laughs> so I'm gonna to go to bed in a minute. Okay, I think Martin's still in there tonight. Yeah, Martin, he's yeah. packing for a trip. <laughs> he he, he bailed about an hour ago. He he's got to get on a ferry in the morning, going yeah. to Hungary or something. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he handles. Um, somebody asked me today, "How you be a go how do you become a co-host?" All you have to do is ask us. And be willing to do one of the jobs we do, uh, doing the program. I mean, uh, we, one guy watches the gallery, another guy watches with tips. Martin was spotting people when they wanted to talk to light them up because that's what we have to do on this end. And it's buttons you don't see, buttons you don't get as a regular member. But you're all welcome to be a part of it. Really, you are. It's yeah, about ten minutes to nine o'clock. What's up? Because it's about time for us to wrap it up. We're supposed to wrap up about I got a piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If I nobody got else has anything to add tonight, if you are leaving, save the chat. I'm doing that right now. And all that information that we shared throughout the evening is going to be on the chat. Uh, a copy of this program tonight will be on our website. See, see the address? Where is it at? It's down there somewhere. Worldwidewoodturners.org. Worldwidewoodturners.org is our website. And we put a lot of information there that you share with us uh, because that's what we're here for. If we be of assistance to you, you want to be a part of it, you want to take out your iPhone and videotape something. Oh, and somebody asked me tonight in a, in a personal chat, how do they take a picture of what's on the screen if they want to see it well i have a secret that's how i take a picture of it wait where is it there it is here's a screenshot it's, it's my i don't get a screenshot on my mac at least i can't figure out how to do it. i use my cell phone 
I'm going to pop it on there. Um, you, hey, Eddie, Eddie, can I show, can I show something? A, what's that? Can I, show, can I show something real quick? Keep talking. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, Matt, Matt Harbor. Um, I, w during the meeting tonight, I, I, I metalized the edge of this thing, and you can see the, uh, the knurling texture a little better. Wow. Nice. Very nice. So, anyway, just thought that, that's, that's beautiful. All I, yeah, thank you. Hey, Eddie, I'll tell you how to get the screenshot on your Mac. Okay. Command three. Command shift three or four. Command shift three will take the whole screen. Command shift four will give you a little icon on there and you drag it around with your arrow and leave the arrow go and you've just got exactly what you, you uh, highlighted. Now I have a picture of you. Hey Matt, I got a question. How did you, what did you use for the, uh, uh, the metal embellishment? Is that a uh, paste? Yeah, it's it's a gilt cream. Okay. Um, gilt this cream. this particular, I mean, there's a bunch of different ones you can get. To ones you right. can. Uh, this is a, this is the Goldfinger brand. It comes in a tube. And I don't know if you all can see that or yeah. not. Uh, but it's uh, it, and they've got uh, silver, gold, bronze, copper, and so on. Uh, and the way you do it is you is you put just a little bit on your and you can use gloves if you'd like, but you put just a little bit of it on your finger and you just want a very thin skin, and then you you go over the top of your piece with it just hitting the tops of it. You don't want it to get down in the in the texture in the crevices. You're just hitting the top of it. So and I could put my finger on it right now because I've hit it with three coats of lacquer tonight. But. <laughs> Hey, you know, Matt, we're going to have to ask you to do that. You know that. Sure, sure. All right. We'll put um, you in I, I, I will that. say that I, I learned how to do that from Nick Agar. So I took a class with him at, at Aramont, and that, text, that technique comes from him. So Good. He's a good turner. He really is. No, he's amazing. He's a font of wonderful ideas. Man is always taking pictures and always thinking outside the box. Yep, that's what you need. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. It's five minutes to nine, and I really we we ran late, late, late last week. If you got something else to throw in a pot, throw it in a pot. Otherwise, we're gonna call it a night. All right, we're gonna call it a night. I'll look forward to be back in your home next week uh, as we do this once again. Oh wait, I won't be here. Sergeant Doug, I'll Rose. be here. D Doug's gonna be there. He, he's he's filling in for me as host next week. I can't promise you I'm going to get it right, but we're going to sure try. Well, this ought to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. If y'all want help, I've done. Even if y'all if y'all want help, I've done a lot of co-hosting too. So. Oh yeah, we'll want your help for sure. <laughs> Matt, will you email me your address? Uh, just in my personal accounts, C A P N Eddie Castellan at Gmail. Um, send me your contact information. Make sure Doug has it. And I, uh, I, I did email you guys on on the from the email on the worldwidewebturners.org site about the the pores that we were talking about. Yeah, but uh, I, I'll I'll send all that stuff again to you. Yes. Yes, please. Um, and folks, if you didn't follow on, we got this thing started over a little bit over a year ago. Um, we never did, and don't see the need to do an email sign up. There's registration re recommended by them that we do registrations and code words and all this other stuff. We're open to the entire world and I don't see the need to do any of that. And I'm not going to collect your email addresses because I get enough of that, pardon me, that crap on my email every single day. And like I said a couple of weeks ago, if you want to have some fun, type in iWatch into your browser. Go looking for iWatch in your browser. Then stand by. You're going to be bombarded <laughs> with offers from everybody in the world that's got a gizmo watch. I'm still getting them. That had to be a month ago. But with that, we're, you know, we invite you all to be part of it. We're not going to do a registration and we don't charge anything. And we have a newsletter and a website and we, we share stuff here every week. We want you to be part of it. It's not a con or a ploy. There's no way for us to take any of your money. We don't want your money. We want your knowledge. And if that sounds like I'm selling insurance, I'm not selling insurance. It's straight away. We want your knowledge. Tonight, 
I learned about a sander. Tonight, I learned about a chattering tool. Tonight, we had a, a demonstration on ornaments. Um, uh, tonight, we had uh, a couple other things pop in on us. See, these were all coming from you. We didn't pay anybody for it. We're going to share it with you, and hopefully you'll come back with what you have and share it with us. With that in mind, folks, again, thank you for joining us, inviting us into your home again tonight. Above all else, and I cannot emphasize this any more than that, please be safe. And I'll see you again next. No, Chuck, uh, Doug will see you. I'll see you in a, in a week or so. Take care. Good. Be good and good night. Uh, good night, everyone. Uh, good night, Eddie. Good, night, good to see you, Joaquin. Yeah, thank you very much, Matt. You be careful. Good night, John boy. <laughs> oh, Thank you, Joaquin. Hey, I, my my thumb is healing, man. I'm turning through the through the through the the stitches and everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> night, everybody. <laughs>